Hey everyone, we've got Miss Monica this afternoon. Hello. <laughs> so we're going to just see what happens because Monica's feeling pretty good. So let's just uh, go in there and see, see what unravels, shall yeah, we? See what the body does. <laughs> the body can tell us. The body can tell. I had a lady today who uh, had to cancel her last appointment because she had a cold mm -hmm. and she's one of those people. If I have a cold, uh, I yes. must not go anywhere. Yeah. Do anything, live a life. <laughs> anyway, I of course said, well, I don't care. If you want to cancel, that's on you. Don't you put it on me. Yeah. My immune system, my responsibility. Yeah. I... And do you remember the last time you got sick, how stressed you were before you got sick? Yeah. You were in a really high stress. You know, it's often yeah. when we're stressed yeah. that we get, you know, sick and have yeah. a cold or a flu. Yeah. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, so to start with, your adrenal survival, deep survival, hidden deep survival all agree with you and they're doing okay. So let's check some gates and things then. Okay. Oh, you've had a couple of family things go on lately? You met up with some family Oh, members? yeah, 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 yeah. And that all went well? So cousins you hadn't seen forever and... Over for 50 years. For 50 years! <laughs> That's worked, so funny. We worked together. God, it's a shit's a small world. I know. Her brother and her father. Fingers outstretched. And my father Ooh. were were brothers. Ooh, wow. Okay. So we found something. So the feet, when we turn them in, they're even, but the fingers are about an inch apart. Yeah. So basically, one side, yeah. the yeah. left side, is too tight. So that's why the right one's longer. This, so shoulder, this shoulder is sore. Okay. So we'll get in there and work those shoulders and okay. see what's going on there. Then we'll have a look at the stress in underneath there just for fun. Okay. Yeah, right. So you used to work together, but you didn't know you were cousins at the time. No. Everybody used to say, I used to relate it because we had the same surname. And I said, I don't know much about my father's family, so I wouldn't have a clue. And I went and asked for a transfer um, from head office to one of the local branches and she said why do you want to go there and I said because I live in the next suburb and she said oh you're not Margaret and Pat's daughter by any chance are you and I said yep she said well my father and your father are brothers I said well I'll be able to go out there and tell them now that we're all re related <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> well I knew I wasn't related so my surname growing up was Sheil S-H-E-I-L and any other shields in the neighbourhood were S H I E L D S or oh, yeah. there was even a politician, I think. Uh, no, I think the politician was S H E I L. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah it was Glenn Shield. So yeah. when we went to Scotland in I don't know twenty eleven or something like that, yeah. and we saw Glenn Shield Lock, which wasn't that Glenn Shield, but he was a descendant. So as you do, I got onto Facebook and said, hey, are we connected to this Glen Shield over here in Scotland? Yeah. <laughs> Have your hands or feet or anything been sore? No. How are the knees going? Just, just this one knee. Yeah, so often, okay, but it's heaps better than it oh, was. Oh, yes, yes. I've got my appointment with... Um, Sean? Sean next week. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so with the shoulders locked in, yeah. there go the adrenals. So they were fine before. Okay. So in other words, your shoulders have a little bit of stress yeah. stored yeah. in them. Oh, that one's okay. Oh, oh hello. Oh, yeah, right. So now that we've got the shoulders in there, we've got your adrenals are on and there's a deep survival and a hidden deep survival pattern. Okay. Yeah, right. Better start. I've got all my Before your appointment. <laughs> uh, I thought about cancelling and I thought, oh, oh that's yeah. funny. My <laughs> grand my grandma on mum's side, Blanche, she was a uh, she was very naughty. She was a really big woman and she loved her sweets. Yeah. And she would have someone from the blue nurses come once a week to check her blood sugar because she was diabetic. 
and after the blood sugar lady left, she would eat like cream buns and stuff like that. She was going, well, it's a week until I have to see her again. Because <laughs> uh, Sean's away the next week, so I can't cancel and just make it the next Oh, week. he's off on a cruise, isn't yeah. he? So I don't know whether he's just off for the week or the two weeks or whatever. Yeah, right. So. But no, nah, got to do it. And are you really kicking yourself with your weight or are you happy that you've lost so much and you're allowing yourself? Oh, yeah, no. yeah, I'm, I'm fine because yeah. I know I've got the plan. Yes. And I've got to have it all off by the 6th of May. Yes. That's Troy's anniversary. Oh, very nice. So I've decided that if I can get the 40 back off by, the, by his anniversary and then that four that that you wanted me to lose years ago. <laughs> and I said I couldn't. I'm going to have a go and see if I can. Beautiful. The extra four. Yeah. Yeah, very so nice. So take me down to 68. Yes. And I want to have try and have that done by his birthday in July, and he would have been 44. Oh, wow. How fabulous so would that be? So if I get 40 off by his 40th birthday, and I did that, well, the thing why is, you know, do, you, you know you can do it. Yeah, why can't I do 44 by his 44th <sighs> birthday? Why do we sabotage ourselves? Then I'd, I'd be really happy because, like, we've been trying to do that for years. <laughs> we keep get, getting distracted. Yeah. Now, I was chatting to someone this morning about, you know, and she was sort of bemoaning post-menopausal weight and all sorts of things yeah. and saying that she's so good and when the more we talked about it the more you know don't forget that you are fighting those obesogenic things going on in your body you know yeah. so when our bmi is up over 30 our tummy fat is releasing anti-weight loss hormones all the time oh, is it, really? it wants to keep the weight on deliberately to keep us safe because weight is about survival. So 10,000 years ago, you didn't have weight on. There was a, you know, people starved during winter and people died. So weight is about survival. Oh, hello. Okay. So do you just go through the book to find what's... Yeah. Oh, okay. So I just sort of asked what was the priority to link in with this. And there's something about self-love, self-worth going on in there. And I always do wonder, you know, is it stuff going on with you or is it genetic with your mom or is it even genetic with your daughter you know because you feel all of that stuff going on mm. you know you can't help yourself because it's yeah. so similar but then again there's always a daughter-in-law and your grandkids as well that you never see mm. so you know like it's it's easy to say i'm okay with that but you know what does the heart really say oh troy's clerk got put up at the church oh very Last nice thursday thursday yeah one of the first days she's gone Anyway, I thought I would ask her, because I was invited to go to see the hanging of it. Yes. Anyway, I thought, well, I'll ask her if she wants to go, because I'd hate her to find out later that I went and I didn't ask her. So anyway, I didn't get an answer back, so I went. Oh. And then I thought, well, Nanda wanted a picture of the plaque sent to her, so I thought I'll send one to Crystal, one to Amanda. I got a reply. She said, oh, I'm so sorry, I've been so busy. Um, she's got to coach football now or something. So I said, oh, that's fine. That's... And she said, oh, I'll take the kids up to the church and let them have a look because it's outside in the pergola sort of thing. So, um, yeah, whether she does or not, it's another thing. I don't think. That's cool. I just wanted to ask her just in case she found out that I went and I didn't ask her. So. There's two affirmations under self-love and self-worth that just showed up that they both unlocked. Mm -hmm. One of them was, I release all childhood traumas that are blocking my self-worth. Okay. And the other one was, I release all childhood traumas that are blocking my self-love. Which is, and none of the others showed up, so that's out of 40, you know, yeah, 43, yeah. 44. Let me ask, is there anything else? 
I thought I'd get rid of all of that stuff, but maybe it just keeps coming up every Well, so and also, don't forget, you know, because you've got grandkids and kids who are going through stuff, that can keep bringing up our stuff at the time as well if it hasn't been fully dealt with. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, yeah. hey, yeah. initially there was, you know, your adrenal survival, deep survival, hidden deep survival were okay. Yeah. Then yeah. I had to pop in the shoulders, and don't forget, since then, uh, you've had that go on with Troy's plug. Yeah. You've met your cousins, yeah. you know, sort of from yeah. 50 years ago. So, you know, that, that will bring stuff up. Yeah. Yeah, because we, we talked about the family and stuff like that. Because she was my boss, but she never, you know, unless you had a problem, you'd go and see her. And I was pretty good in those days. I don't know how I did it, but I was pretty good. And she said, she said I would see you walking, you know, from one end of the floor to the other. And she'd say, oh, I know that person, I know that person. Yeah, right. Of course she knew because I looked like somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, in the family. So something about that is blocking your, oh, 11th, just a sec, is it your 11th chakra or your 10th chakra? Yeah, your 11th chakra. So the 11th chakra is about what is in your body. So... This is the truth of our body as opposed to the stuff we make up in our head that isn't our body that oh, we say yeah. is anyway. Yeah. So it's the source of our isness. Okay. <laughs> as you know, for wanting to make up words. Yeah. But it, it's also the realm of um, the way our chakras interface with the etheric layers and all sorts of stuff. So it's sort of got, yeah. it, it's the stuff that's out there that's affecting our isness in here. Okay. Fair enough. So let's see where the eleventh chakra is sitting. It's more the truth and of hold. the body. Mm. So it's first or third stage stress. And hold, it's third stage stress. Okay. Okay, you'll fix it. That's the plan. Exactly. Exacto mundo. <laughs> okay, what do we need to do here? Okay, so in essence straight into the tongue or on the aura, into the tongue, good. Okay, so bush fuchsia is one of the ones in the family that's about, uh, oh, right, so as a child, when you are traumatised as a child because of household stress and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. our brain is discombobulated. We can go to school and not feel smarter than the average that's it. thing. So bush fuchsia is part of the whole, I don't feel smart, I feel dumber than everyone else. Yeah. And that has become part of your isness. Yeah. Yeah. I think that still is. Yes. Yeah, head. it's part of your is. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So let's see if there's an affirmation associated with that little guy. So that's the Australian bush flower essence, bush fuchsia. That's never come up. Before. No. Okay. So the phrase at the beginning or the affirmation at the beginning is... I learned that nothing is impossible when we follow our inner guidance, even when its direction may threaten us by reversing our usual logic. Oh, that's interesting. That's I, so true, though. And that's all saying, yes, this is really important for you. I learned that nothing is impossible when we follow our inner guidance, even when its direction may threaten us by reversing our usual logic. You know, because sort of thinking about the defence mechanisms you've had your whole life with things like, you know, you work too hard or you eat too much, or you in the past, you know, yeah, you've yeah. drank, you know, sort of bottle of wine here and there. You know, it's sort of like that stuff just stuffs down our ability to think. Mm. Or you avoid church sometimes, mm. you know, rather than going there. You yeah, know, so, it, right. you know, all of this yeah. sort of stuff is avoiding our inner guidance. I'll avoid anything if I don't want to do it. Yeah, okay. Or if I think there's going to be a problem. So it's for dyslexia, poor learning ability, for people who stutter, uh, nervousness in public, and ignoring your gut feelings. So it helps with the courage to speak out, clarity in speaking, being in touch with intuition, and balancing the left and right hemispheres of the brain. That's so true. 
And you can imagine when you're a kid who's work, living in a uh, stressful environment, what that does is raises cortisol if you don't know what your household's going to be like when you go there yeah. that raises cortisol because you don't know what moods everyone is in cortisol shuts down short-term memory and then you're there if you, and you've got to do your homework so how often you know as a kid you get into your room and do your homework mm. but you get home you're stressed because of the environment then you have to go do your homework and your brain's going i don't know where i am in time and space why would this be easy for me at this moment well this didn't change even when i got married because the kids and I would, whoever saw him first would say, oops, watch out, he's in a grumpy mood. Yeah, right. We'd just tell each other what was going on. So then we, we avoided arguments because we behaved ourselves. Didn't say a word. Mm, but obviously what behaving yourself really means is that you're suppressing your true self. Yeah, that's right. You're not yeah. speaking up. You're yeah. not being authentic. Oh. Yeah. Because really in a relationship, you know, with your husband and your kids, you should be able to say whatever you want because we don't have to agree with one another. Exactly. We've all got a, a mind of our own. Yeah. yeah. We should be able to talk. We should be able to talk. If the world was a decent place, we should be able to talk. Yeah. And in lots of places you can't. Yeah, in lots of places you can't. Sometimes even at work you've got to... Watch what you say. Yeah, yeah right. So this this oh, this paragraph, your body wanted to hear it as well. Mm -hmm. This essence balances the left side of the brain, the logical, the rationing, fu rational functions, mm -hmm. with the right side of the brain as the intuitive, creative functions. It's excellent for helping people get in touch with their intuition, and more importantly. Trust and listen to them. 99% <laughs> okay. of people of the time, our gut feelings are right, but in our left hemisphere-dominated society, our reaction is often to consider these intuitions in logical terms and then dismiss them. Yeah, okay. huh. Albert Einstein once said, I never came across any of my discoveries through the rational process of thinking. Mm. I know you're getting better at trusting your intuition and following yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we need four under your tongue and seven uh, through your aura. Yeah, linked in with quite a deep pain and punishment circuit. Okay. Interesting. But you know, it's like uh, a lady I was um, working with whose childhood had been very, very traumatised. And her father used to beat them with sticks and the mother while she while the kids were being beaten with sticks would actually call out not the face Pete not the face so imagine being a child and having your mother they beat him on the body dad not on the head yeah. where it can be seen That's right. so imagine what that does to our poor little psyches yeah. We see her in that time. Yeah, right. Yeah, one of my clients, uh, she actually became a cleaner because she just, she couldn't sit still. So she thought, well, I might as well be cleaning and doing something my whole life because they grew up in a farm and any time she was not doing something, her mum would get, she called it a switch. She'd just grab a switch off the nearest tree and whack the back of her legs so that she just knew that, okay, I'm not going to sit down. <laughs> If I sit down, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get whacked.
I mean, which I belong to a decent family. <laughs> and like, but what le lessons did you learn from it? Um, my main lesson was behave. Yeah. So yeah. But your way of behaving is suppressing your personality. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not yeah. the same as um, being good and, you um, know, the, like that's the whole fear-based behaving, which yeah. isn't actually very good for our soul. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's only now that I'm starting to, um, yeah, whatever I want to do, I do. Yeah. Whereas I... Think of everybody else. Yeah. Before me. Yeah. I think that's why I'm having a good time this year. So, you know. Got out for me. Tried. Mm -hmm. That was trust and trust issues. Oh, okay. So something about these shoulders. Mm. Because it's, because it's don't forget. So I tell you. Yeah, because don't forget the shoulders are very much about fight, flight, freeze. You know, so they're about standing your ground, speaking mm. up. Speaking up for yourself. Yeah. Sometimes it's got that anger in there because uh, if we're not angry, we can't say what we need to say. Yeah. But when you grow up in a household where you're suppressed all the time, you don't yeah. do that. Yeah, that's right. You know, you cower in fear rather than standing up for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever have to stand up? Where, where, what order are you kids? I'm the middle. You're the middle. So did you ever have to stand up for your little sister? When you're in the middle, you either are good friends with the older one mm -hmm. or the younger one. And it was the older? Um, no, I suppose to do the younger one okay. more, more times. But then she was, she was dad's pet. Oh, right. So it was a different relationship. Yeah. Yeah, okay. She was snowball. She had snowy hair and she was just lovely. Hold out for me. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just trying to think of what good traits I had as a kid. You were your mum's best friend. Yeah, yeah, mum I was fine with, but dad, I... Well, until now that I'm, I know a bit more about the family, you know, I said to one of them, I said, if I had heard a couple of those words while I was young, I would have felt so much better about Dad, but, you know, everything was just doing things wrong all the time. Did we check your logic and gestalt a few months ago? Yes. Let's recheck it again. Okay. So two fingers behind your left ear. Let's have a look. Okay, so six times eight minus 12 plus two. Hold. Okay, still got logic in there. Now I'll get you to think of a big purple elephant with a nice big red fluffy hat and he's roller skating down through the middle of town. Hold. Yeah, okay, so we've got logic on the left hemisphere. Same little fingers, same spot behind the right ear. Okay, so now think of the number 81, divide by 9, add 12, minus 3. Hold. Okay. Now think of, uh, think of your art stuff that you have around your house and the projects you've got going on and how it'll feel when you're in a creative space where you're doing some creative stuff every time you feel like it. Hold. Oh, interesting. So you've got double logic going on at the moment. Something's shifted with your creativity. Are you feeling less creative at the moment? Yeah, because everything's a mess. Right. No, nothing's organised. Okay. So we've got to get I your... I shouldn't say a mess. It's disorganised. Yeah, we've got to get your creativity back in that right yeah. hemisphere. Something's yeah. shifted in there. Okay. Uh, should I put the visual centres in as well? I will. Just because we're chatting about, I'll do these ones first. Sorry, they got some. <laughs> okay, so. So this is a cross. So we see whether or not the visual centers going through hold out. The optic chiasm are working and there's this little guy. 
cross in two dots and hold. Are you reading at the moment? Not much. Does it make you tired? Yes. Yeah. So when these ones are unlocking, it's usually that we're not comprehending. The comprehension just isn't there because the brain's working over time in order to read and comprehend, so it makes us yeah. tired. Yeah. 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 I'm not a I'm not a reader anyway. I'd rather read something that I can do with my hands. But you are reading bits and be bits and bobs of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going in okay. That's, like going that's in feeling okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, mu it must be because the interest is there. Yeah. Because, you know, I've had kids with dyslexia and ADHD and all sorts of things. And if they have to do stuff at school that they have zero interest in, their brain shuts down. If they're at home reading about something that they have interest yeah. in, their yeah. brain works. Yeah. Well, that's, that's me. I'm not interested. Doesn't I know you're in a really good space. Hmm. Anyway, I'll test. Don't wreck it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm just wondering whether, you know, from a counselling perspective, a session would be good with David at some stage. Yeah. Because there's still some word, interesting word-isms that you've got with your childhood. Because, mm. yeah. You need to be celebrating what you've achieved. Yeah, and I know you yeah, are. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I Yeah, and you are consciously, but I think there's still some unconscious stuff in there that's still trying to drag you down and going, ah, yeah. nick off. Let yeah. us get on with things. Yeah. Like you say, this is your year. Yeah. And so far, what, we're only in three months. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I've caught up with a fair few people and I've done a, quite a bit, so... Making lists, yeah. I think that's, and it's when I don't make the list and I don't weigh myself, that's when it creeps on. Oh yeah, you've got to weigh yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I, I know everyone has this concept of weighing themselves once a week or once a month. What a load of crap. I can't for, remember for, what I did. But for an ADHD person or for yeah. someone whose brain fixates on things, that's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Because then you do, it's like torture. Yeah. And I can remember what I did yesterday, I think. Oh, yeah, I had those mini crumpets. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> that's why it's sitting on there today. You've done crumpets. You've got to eat them quickly, otherwise they get mouldy in this yeah, weather. Yeah, don't they? Yeah. Well, I've, I've had them now. I haven't had crumpets. Oh, I reckon years. Jay buys them occasionally for Teddy. For Teddy. <laughs> 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 But they are so nice, aren't they? Especially with the honey on. Yeah, pure refined up. carbohydrates. <laughs> Our cells go... <laughs> <laughs> they did. <laughs> I saw them. They go, thank you, I'm not going to starve for the next week. <laughs> and I found it so hard the next day, um, you know, drinking my water. I didn't drink any water the next day. I had coffee, but oh. no water. Interesting. What's that about? I don't know. I took it to work with me yesterday. Yeah. Hmm. Fascinating. I would have drunk just about a litre all up today, so... Yeah. We've got another one out there to drink, so mm. we'll see what goes on. And I felt hungry. Yeah, right. Whereas, you know, I've been pretty good as far as hunger's concerned. I think Friday's the first of April, isn't it? Oh, no idea. Yeah, I think it's Friday, so. We're into the next quarter. See what I can do. I should know. Uh, yeah, I've got no idea what date it is. No, I don't care. Two trainings on tomorrow. Once I get on them, I'll collapse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's 
like where, when I solved my problem on Monday, I came home, laid on the bed and went sound asleep. Yeah, right. And that was something like three o'clock or something. And then I slept all night, so. So when you think about yourself as a child, do you think about yourself as happy or sad or um, just quiet or? Just quiet. Because I really don't, I don't really have too much of a sadness now, I think. About it, yeah. Yeah, I can sort of, I picture mum in there a lot. Yeah. Um, especially when I had the kids. And I sort of wonder, you know, like, because... Was your mum like Amanda, your daughter? Yeah. So, sort of, a, and I know you did the same thing. So it's about choosing a life to protect the children and keep everything as safe and mm. stable as you can. And that's a pretty powerful thing to do when there's not nice stuff going people. on. Yeah. Come so, on. and sometimes that's the best we can do in that situation if we don't want to lose mm. everything. So that's a generational oh. like imagine how strong all you women are because of that yeah that's pretty powerful Manda and mum were so much alike because they they don't talk whereas I've got to have my two bobs worth good in in the relationship with Les yeah yeah I had to have my two bobs worth whereas Manda's can't yeah oh she just doesn't she says Keep the peace. And mum always did that too. Because I know when, when I was going to say, I, you know, I suppose I sort of do the same thing, but nah. When dad, uh, sort of. When dad died, I said, oh, why did you go out looking for someone else? She said, once bitten and twice shy. She said, there's no way. And I've done exactly the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, why would you bother? And then it's already said, something happens to John, I'll be by myself, it's fine. So it is a trait. Yeah. Because yeah. I thought, well, why would I go out and look for someone else? I thought he was the best thing since sliced bread and it didn't work out, so... But what... very early on in the piece it yeah. didn't work out. Yeah, so what lessons have I learned? Well, now you wouldn't put up with those shenanigans. Well, well I hope I wouldn't. No, no. Nah. You've got me. <laughs> Not a chance you'd put up with those shenanigans. <laughs> I'd go, Monica. <laughs> what are you Smack doing? me around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, the kinesiology would say, what are you doing? <laughs> Zactamundo. Yeah, interesting. So just ch chatting about that, you're, yeah, in relation to relationships, your brain is just in a whole indifference. Yeah. You know, couldn't be bothered. Yeah, that's right. Whereas some people have to be in a relationship and I'm thinking, well, no, I don't. Yeah. I'm a good talker. Yep. My mouth is the best part of me. <laughs> Yeah, so your brain can't imagine um, enjoyment in a relationship. It just can't even go there. Yeah. Which is why, you know, keeping yeah. your friends. Yeah, yeah. You know, keeping your friends up and running. Yeah. Well, I can go to the supermarket and talk to four or five people that I don't even know. Yeah. I watched a movie last night that was um, from like 1993, I think it was, with Wesley Snipes and... Oh, yeah. Sylvester Stallone, and it was called. Yeah. Uh, something. <laughs> and basically, they were coming up with a, a, a future from uh, 2032 where basically both of those guys had been frozen, you know, mm. as part of the uh, jail system. And they were both brought out in 1932, Wesley Snipes, for nefarious means. You know, he'd been mm. taught to be a big fat murderer while he was under. But. Uh, Stallone was brought back to be the cop who had to bring him back because cops in 1932, uh, 2032 had no idea how to deal with anyone mm. because in, 19, in 2032 they had stopped 
sex and kissing and meat and uh, swearing and you name it. And there yeah. was no money. Everything oh. was all based on credit scores. Yeah. So if you're walking down the street and you swore, you know, a thing would come out of a machine saying, Bing, you've lost two, yeah. two demerit points. You've, uh, yeah, got two demerit points. So, and which was, of course, very funny. Yeah. So watching what's been going on the last couple of yeah, years and then right. seeing what a movie was yeah. made, you know, 30 years ago. <laughs> and going, right, how did they know? <laughs> Pre-programming, maybe? Yeah. But the, whole, but the whole relationship thing in the future, there was no touch, no actual relationship because all that was illegal. Yeah. So without a license and all sorts of stuff and then it was all labs and, yeah. you know. Anyway, so maybe that would suit you better because you put on these little 4D things and then mm. the relationship happened through the whole yeah. device thing. Mm. Go, ah, uh, okay then. Anyway, can imagine Sylvester yeah. Stallone broke the rules by the end. Yeah. <laughs> With Sandra Bullock. Oh, so, okay, yeah. You know. Anyway, it's all pretty funny. Mm. Yeah, so the whole enjoyment thing... Uh, because you and once again, I'm not trying to change this. I'm just sort of saying, yeah, in relation to relationships, your brain is quite indifferent in relation, doesn't yeah. care, yeah. you know, which is good because that's better than being um, yearning for it or pining for yeah. it. Or, that, yeah. That's yeah. not where you are. Yeah. You are literally in indifference, yeah. and and the reason why is because you can't imagine any enjoyment out of it. Yeah, that's right. So why would you bother? I think kids these days, you know, one of my neighbours, when she was about 75, uh, she got a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. And they've been together now for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And her kids disowned her when she got with her boyfriend. Because how dare she, you know, your father's, your our father is dead, so, you know, you're supposed to go to the grave with him. And uh, anyway, so she chose to have a boyfriend. The kids disowned her. One of the nieces turned up one day. Hadn't seen her in years and years and years. But the way she was looking around the house was like, I wonder if I could get the inheritance if my, you know. So it felt like that when she was walking through asking how much everything cost. Yeah. You just go, I'd rather leave my house to cats. Thank you very much. That's right. The kids who like, treat so you so much crap. If you get an inheritance... You should just say thank you because you don't deserve it. You no. haven't you haven't earned it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry, the government will make sure we don't have an inheritance mm. to give to anyone. Mm. <laughs> like if this law goes through today, which it will, like it'll be interesting to see how quickly this just screws up Australia big time. Mm. Do you remember going back a couple of years ago, I think um Sri Lanka was the first country where they decided to go purely organic, which of course yeah. is, you know. And so then they ended up having civil war and they ended up having people starving on the streets, but the government gave them, uh, basically introduced a social credit score overnight mm. and people were getting money from the government through this social credit score mm. through its system. And, you know, you can sort of see all these farmers around the world. Have you seen the... Um, seen what's going on with the farmers it's been awesome they're, st they're standing up standing against up net themselves. zero yeah. yeah and uk is the latest one to join about bloody time you know yeah. they've been last to the party yeah but uh you know at least it's happening yeah yeah so yesterday or the day before a whole bunch of tractors turned up oh good yeah which is good come on but there's so many different um, things, um, like banks, um, your power, your rates, um, supermarkets. They've got us over a barrel. Mm. Yeah. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. Well, there's another... Um there's another call for an actual Australian bank through a post office, like an Australian post office bank okay. that's owned for and by Australians, because none of them are Australian. It yeah. doesn't matter what they're called. They're all owned by the same places around the world that own everything. Well, the Commonwealth Bank... No, it's not well, Australian. It's, it's, 
there's nothing Australian about the Commonwealth Bank of Australia anymore. It's no, still no, owned by the same. It was. It was. Years, yeah, yeah. When we were kids, yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Did you know you can get cash out from the post office for the big four banks? No. The big four banks. Cash out from any post office in Australia. How cool is that? Hmm. The ATMs then will charge you if it's not their own ATM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even a lot of the ones that are, they do. Yeah. I need to get some money out, and I used the one outside, and it said if you proceed, it'll cost you an extra two dollars ninety. I said cancel. Yeah, that bags. So I don't need the money back. That bad. Yeah. wait another 10 minutes and I could go into the uh, bank inside anyway, so. <laughs> and then it was free? Yeah. Which bank? Uh, Heritage. Heritage, right. Okay, so let's make sure that 11th chakra is all balanced now. Uh, so, pituitary Voma 11th, okay. And hold. And hold, beautiful. And hold, good. Let's see what those arm lengths are doing. Fingers outstretched. Oh, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Not 100%, no, but pretty but close. Yeah. Uh, let's check that gestalt side of the brain. Put two fingers behind there again. Okay, so imagine a big purple fluffy toy with uh, sitting on a big red chair and just relaxing, feeling oh, beautiful. Okay, so... 90 multiplied by 3, take away 47. Hold. Okay, and we've kept our, kept our logic over there, but we've got the gestalt back on the right side yeah. of the brain. What about any mm. connections from left to right sides of the brain? So amygdala in general or amygdala connections? Amygdala connections. So left to right amygdala. And hold out for me. <laughs> so there's uh, 250 million neurons that connect the left to right amygdala. Okay. Teddy's got an Easter bonnet parade tomorrow, which I can't do because I've got training in the morning. I wonder if oh. I could skip training. <laughs> I can't skip training. Um, computer didn't work. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't put that in your head. <laughs> well, halfway, you know, my practitioner excellence course, I was running from that Zoom on Monday morning. And halfway through the Zoom, the recording stopped because the computer was out of memory. Oh, which okay. I, you know, so then I went, right, so luckily I'm fairly good with my camera, so I just whacked my camera up there and started to record yeah. and had two parts to it. But man, I was like, really? <laughs> Come on. So Jay and I have spent the last couple of days making sure we've got enough memory for my two trainings tomorrow. Oh, okay. So I've got Kinesiology for the Home and Kinesiology Foundations. 
So oh, David's my human on the table both times. Yeah. yeah. That's good. What does that do? So this just helps to loosen the jaw, which loosens the dura, which helps to hold spine with tension. Yeah, yeah so the dura um, attaches at the tailbone. It's around the spinal cord the whole way up. It attaches at C3, uh, the top of the skull, the sphenoid bone and the jaw. Okay. So when we're doing this, we're just waking up the dura and saying, hey, little dura, you don't need to be so stressed. Mm. I must admit this year I am, I am happier. And things are not sitting in my head for so long. Like mm. if I come up with an idea and I, you know, I get cranky, I think, well, Think about it for twelve, you know, for a day, and you can't do anything about it. Forget it. Mm. So that's that's working this year. So nice. Whereas I hang on to it and hang on to it. You know. Nothing I can do about it. So. Do you believe in your guarding angels? Yes. Right. Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning. Have a think, is there anything stressing you? And ask your angels to take care of anything they can. Because okay. sometimes they're just hanging around waiting for a waiting. job. Yeah. They don't want to be lazy. Well, they want to help you, but they yeah. can only help you if you ask yeah, them to help. Ask help. Yeah, I've probably told you this story before, but one of my clients from many, many, many years ago, uh, she had six guides, guardian angels, whatever you want to call them. And she knew she had six because she was an automatic rider. Mm -hmm. And she was, she was a big wig in a big job mm -hmm. earning big, big money. Mm -hmm. And so when she had to get anything out of her head, she would just sit down and she would start to automatic write. But then at some stage throughout that, the writing would change and she would automatically write in the handwriting of one of her guides. That happens to me. Does it? See, it does. you're already communicating. Like with them. I can, I can be writing straight up and down, and then halfway through, it'll be more rounded or backwards or forwards or. Interesting. Yeah. So she always believed that she had five guides or angels because she had five distinct writing patterns. Yeah. So she went to see a psychic friend of mine who was quite connected, and she could actually see energies or spirits or entities or angels mm -hmm. and and when she came in she said wow well, aren't you lucky you've got six guides and my client said five and she said no six the tall one's just really quiet <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so then uh but yeah the the and he, he was black this big tall black angel and uh anyway so then she had to pay attention to another way to get information from him and he was more he was more auditory rather than yeah. writing. Because that's why I type it sometimes, because I don't like looking back and seeing all the different writings. Interesting. Because another one of my clients who has uh, many personalities, um, different people, shall we say, in his, yeah. in his field, and uh, depending on the writing, when he's writing, would let him know which one of the little people were coming through. So he's multiple personality. Yeah. So the writing would be everything from like tiny children to teenagers to female to masculine to yeah. really interesting. Yeah. And he'd go, well, I think that's this person, but I think this one, you know. Yeah. I tried to write a, interesting. a story, yeah, my story sort of thing. And the writing was something shocking. I ended up typing it up. Hmm. And, Interesting. Yeah, I'd, so I'd, do you think you morphed into that age maybe or? Yeah. I, I don't know. It was until you've said that now, I never thought about it. I thought I, Interesting. Was, just, I thought I was just messy. Or was one of your angels helping you out with what was yeah. going on at the time? Because I know when I read it back later, I thought, oh, geez, that's come out pretty quick. And it's accurate um, because sometimes you, you forget the, you know, some of the things that happened to you, but it, it all sort of came out 
because I only read it not long ago, and I thought, hmm, that was really a nice way of putting it. Because I was trying to clear the past. Yeah. You know, yeah, and I nice. thought, well, if I've got it, and it was one way of having it written so that if Amanda wanted to look at it later on or something mm. like that, you know, it would be something that could be, um, yeah. But I was trying to let go of the past. That's, that's why I wrote it in the first place. But, you know, different things have come into my mind about it now, so. Mm. Well done. I just called it Monica. <laughs> Nicely done. Hmm. Yeah, and it's all pretty impressive, you know, when you... Because imagine the other way you could have gone in your life with that sort of childhood, yeah. that sort of husband. Yeah. I'm sure you know people who have gone in other directions completely. Yeah. You know, everything from big fat health issues to, well, lots of toxin abuses and... To drugs. Yeah, drugs. Yeah. Mental problems. Mm -hmm. That is one I'm pleased that I never, never went down the track of is mental illness and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know how I avoided it, but it might have been your mum, mm. you know, because your mum were you, you and your mum were such good friends, you know. Mm. Because when you like, um, you know, David sort of talked about like it's something different. So when I did counselling kinesiology thirty years ago, the belief at the time was that at least if you had one positive for seven negatives, then your body could maintain equilibrium. Mm -hmm. which is pretty crappy yeah. to have seven yeah. negatives to one positive. Yeah. And, but he was saying it's something more like a three to one ratio in the opposite way, that you need three positives to every one negative to maintain equilibrium. So apparently that's okay. study within the last two years or three years or something. Okay. But, but I, anyway, I don't know whether that's even possible to have that many positives. Because, mm. you, know, you know, imagine before school, you know, yeah. with kids who have got ADHD or they're on the spectrum or they're just little shits, you know, it's sort of like, Johnny, get your back together. Johnny, grab your thing. Jo eat your damn breakfast. You know, you can say 20 nasty things before school without yeah. even thinking about it. Mm. So it's pretty hard to have three positives for every negative when you've got, mm. you know, those crazy times of day that we're mm. kids are just being kids. Yeah, that's right. But we've all got timelines. Look, I must admit, I never liked reading as a kid, but I could spell and I knew my tables. Yeah, right, nice. Because I knew that if I didn't know those, I was going to get the cane for every one I got wrong at school. Ah, so you had fear of pain. Yeah. Thank goodness for my fear of pain. <laughs> a little cross. I think that's probably one of the reasons hold out why at primary school I was as good as I was. Mm. Oh, beautiful. So they're yeah, both okay. locking now. Very nice. So that's better action going on from left to right, left which is right. about comprehension yeah. and all that sort of yeah. fun stuff. Auditory integration points. I think this is more about your own negative self-talk on those days when it takes yeah. a bit of... Yeah. Gets, gets a hold. Yeah. But like you say... Oh. It's taking less time now. Yeah. Yeah. To get back up and running. Hold out. Beautiful. Um, 
Okay, so in relation to what? Anything current? No, so this is old. So what's the main thing at the moment that makes you want to escape and stay in bed or in your house or not go out and see humans? Darn those pesky humans. Oh, that doesn't happen very often. So anything at, at work, anything at church, anything with the family? If, if I know it doesn't if, happen much. If someone's annoying me and I want to avoid them, yes. Right. But yeah, I won't go to church or I won't go to... Well, so is that work, you so. having another way of avoiding a confrontation? Yes. Okay. Yep. So in relation to confrontation. So it's not your forte. You no. don't like confrontation. No. Okay. No. So in relation to confrontation. And is that about having to stand up for yourself? Yeah. And I can't think on my feet. So right. I've got to think about it. And if I, if I haven't got time to think about it, I'm going to make the problem worse. Okay. So in relation to confrontation, in relation to thinking on your feet. Mm. And hold out. Because at work we've just got a whole heap of equipment. This guy says, oh, look, we can, we can number these. I said, but they've got to be numbered properly. And he kept on and on and on and on. And I said, that's enough. I can't do it. I said we'll do one lot at a time, like we'll do wheelchairs, uh, you know, a certain size and stuff like that. And in the end, I took my time. I thought, I can't do this. So I think we only did about six and then I, I did them with somebody else on the other day because he wasn't sort of pushing me, you know. <laughs> yeah so no, no no this makes sense so when when you're under pressure when you're having to speak up for yourself when you're when you're feeling a confrontation going on yeah it shuts down your frontal cortex that's your problem solving area yeah. it shuts down the connection from left to right sides of the brain so you can't hear your logical and creative arguments yeah. about something yeah. would going like that help? absolutely Okay. Absolutely. Because I'm, I'm doing that emotional now. stress and yeah. your central meridian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely. Because that's bringing words back to me. Yeah. Yeah. I totally. So, and yeah. uh, and remember this one as well. Anti clockwise over your heart. Oh, so yeah. anti clockwise yeah, yeah. over the heart helps uh, with the three layers of switching. So left right connections of yeah. the brain, front yeah, back yeah. connections, and front yeah yeah front back and top bottom. Yeah. So that does all three. Yeah. This okay. increases your conscious brain energy, yeah. as does this. Okay. Uh, I'm doing some of them now. So. And when you're doing your meditation, it can be a good idea to have your tongue on the roof of the mouth and your hands over, over your base chakra. So yeah. tongue on the roof of the mouth, hands over here. Mm -hmm. So that combination helps to get your celestial circuit moving. Oh, okay. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and your celestial circuit helps to connect your conscious and unconscious pathways. Okay. So that's sort of any time you feel like doing some breathing, even yeah. for 30 seconds, yeah. tongue on the roof of the mouth, hands on your base. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's your governing meridian. This is your central meridian. It's just yeah. activating them to think about each other. Oh, okay. Brilliant. Yeah. Yep. And the other thing you can do is just tap your head, tap your heart and say, okay, brain, okay, heart. Help yeah. me find a solution. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay, brain, okay, heart. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so definitely emotional stress release. I've been points. doing that a lot, yeah. and I can bring back words that. It's I can't amazing think of. how quick it happens, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Because I said that at work. I said, what you've got to do is put your hand here and you'll get the words that you. <laughs> well, it's true. It brings the blood to the front of the head, which makes sense, you know, because any time we put our hand anywhere, we're increasing blood supply. So it's not yeah. magic. Yeah. Like that's actually just something physiological that we can yeah. do yeah. that brings blood there. Awesome. Thanks, sweetie. Okay. How do you feel? Thank well, you. Oh, well, fantastic. That went Thank in a you. direction I was not expecting. No, me either. Cool. Okay. Hope you enjoyed ya. that, everyone. Bye. Bye.